How's it going guys? It's Aaron here. Welcome back to another video on the Computer Dynamo channel. I'm excited to be back, this time with an instructional video on how to prepare your iOS device, whether that be an iPhone, an iPad, or an iPod Touch for sale, trade-in, giveaway, you name it, recycling, let's say. Um, there's a few factors you want to keep in mind, and that's what we're going to be covering today. So what I did was I made you a special uh, narrated screencast of the actual device we're going to be preparing for a giveaway today, which is actually, had it upside down, an iPad Mini 3. It's getting a little long in the tooth. Um, I believe it's about four years old. Uh, so that's what we're gonna be taking a look at today. Make sure that if you have a device that has not been powered on in a long time, that you leave it on the charger for a good while. Make sure it's an Apple official charger, something that has sufficient wattage to charge your device. And leave it on there for about uh, 15 to 30 minutes because if it's really been discharged that thoroughly it's going to take a while so do that in advance and then make sure that you connect to Wi-Fi because that is really going to help us make the process a whole lot easier now there'd be some different steps that you want to take if the device doesn't power on and you wanted to trade it in um, or recycle it but we can go over that uh, after the screencast so stay tuned all right let's get started um, once you're on the home screen you want to open up settings and you'll notice I'm on an iPad so it might look a little different than on your iPhone or your iPod touch but it's basically the same thing except we have a split panel where the main menu of the settings is always present on the left and any menu you click into and subsequently go into their nested menus will show on the right as follows just like that all right so the point we're getting at is that it's basically the same thing on all devices, but it might look slightly different, uh, but I digress. So first thing you want to do is make sure you have a backup of all your data. So there's two primary ways of doing that, of course, um, through iTunes and through iCloud. Now, I advise almost everybody to use iCloud because it's more convenient. Um, it allows you to make automatic backups more consistently and more easily. Um, for me, I already have an iTunes backup, so I'm not concerned about it, but if you don't have a backup or you know you don't have a way of doing it you should look into iCloud um, you can check out my video on iCloud and family sharing and Apple ID I'll leave the link in the description below uh, but for now um, if you haven't already backed up your device in your chosen method I'm going to advise you to click on your name at the top click on iCloud and make sure you go down to iCloud backup and make sure this switch is on and then you want to make sure if it wasn't, if it was on already, you can just check the little text beneath the backup now button and it would give you a timestamp of the last backup. But I recommend making another. So you just click backup now. Now I'm going to click cancel because I don't want it to complete, but for you, you'd want it to complete and confirm that the backup had been done and it would show the date and time or to say just now if it was recently completed. All right, I'm going to turn mine off because I don't need it on, but you should leave yours on. And then if you wanted, let's say, your data to show on other devices, um, you'd want to switch on some of these switches. Otherwise, to just preserve it for a subsequent device you're going to replace this device with, um, you can just use the backup. You don't need to worry about any of these switches. If you have some of these switches enabled, that means that that data won't back up with the iCloud backup and it will actually sync instead because the iCloud backup rather is a catch-all for the data that's not checked off so anything that's checked off you'd want to confirm as best as possible either on another device that you own make sure it exists there that data or you go to iCloud.com on a computer a laptop or a desktop and then click on the different um, categories of data once you're logged in and confirm that that data is present and complete and matching what you have on this device. Okay, but let's move on. So what you want to do primarily is you want to turn off the Find My Device, in this case, Find My iPad. You'd click the Turn Off switch, and then you'd enter your Apple ID password. Once you hit Turn Off, it will turn off the Find My iPad feature, and you can go back. And that's why you need the Wi-Fi on. Now, you could probably do it over cellular, but a lot of devices may not have cellular if you're working on an iPod Touch or a Wi-Fi-only iPad. Of course, an iPhone most likely will have a cellular connection still, as would a cellular iPad. Um, so once you have that completed, you want to go over to General, 
and you want to scroll down to reset and here's where it gets tricky now there's a lot of different selections here that you can choose but the one we're looking for is erase all content and settings that will erase everything permanently from this device if it's not saved anywhere else you will lose it it's as simple as that so make sure you really follow the directions I provided prior which is to back up everything that's important to you to iCloud if you haven't already backed it up to iTunes okay um, but let's proceed and so we let go now it gives you an option to upload data that has yet to be uploaded to iCloud right then which is a nice new feature but don't rely on this do what I had said earlier and complete it before you get to this stage and click erase. Now you'd enter in the passcode and you click erase two times. Cannot be undone. All right, I hope you enjoyed that little screencast. I know I enjoyed making it for you. Uh, so as you can see, I have the iPad mini three. It's welcoming you with a nice hello there. And if you click the home button, it's ready to be set up for the next person to use. Uh, so. Um, this works, of course, if the device turns on and you can actually manipulate the device, but what about if you can't manipulate the device? Well, there's a whole other set of instructions that, quite frankly, are a little bit outside the scope of this video just due to the duration of what needs to be done, uh, but they're somewhat simple, so I'll just verbally explain. What you would do if the device won't uh, turn on is you would turn off the tracking feature, the Find My Device feature, at least via iCloud.com on a computer, on a desktop or a laptop. So you'd visit iCloud.com, log in with your Apple ID and password, and then you would se select the radar image for the Find My Device, and then you would choose the drop down menu, find the device you're trying to give away or recycle, and then choose the little X to the right of it and confirm that you'd like to remove from your list. Now, once it's removed from the list, if the device really cannot turn on, it's ready to be passed on uh, to recycle or sell for parts. Now, if the device does power on, but there is an issue, let's say, with the button, um, home button, or something with the screen where it won't let you really manipulate it properly, as I showed you in the video, what you'd want to do is you'd want to erase it using iTunes. So you'd want to plug the device into a computer with latest version of iTunes, You'd want to put the device into recovery mode. Uh, that also is a little bit outside the scope of this video because each device may be put into recovery mode slightly differently. So I will try to find a link to an Apple article and leave that in the description below. So check that out. Um, and once you have it in recovery mode, you can go into iTunes, select restore, whether it's restore iPad, restore iPhone, you understand, uh, restore device, accept, agree, next, next, next let it erase, it may take a little while to download the version of uh, software, the latest version of software for that device, but once it installs, the device should greet you, um, hello, and then you are ready to turn off the Find My Device feature. So generally to do that, if the device is still connecting to a Wi-Fi or a network, you want to power off the device as best as possible, or at least hard restart it and get it to go off temporarily. And during that time while it's off, you want to go through the process that I prescribed just before, which is going to iCloud.com and turning off Find My iPhone uh, by you know, logging in, choosing the radar, going down through the dropdown and removing the device from the list with a little X and confirming. Uh, so hopefully you found all of that educational and informational and hopefully useful, more importantly. And if you did, leave me a thumbs up. It really means a lot. And subscribe for more content because I'm really trying to grow my viewership and I love interacting with anyone who leaves me a comment or a question. I like answering your questions as best as possible. So in addition, please leave me some comments, some suggestions on what you'd like to see, what you liked, what you didn't, and any questions you may have about the topic we covered today. All right, so until next time, I wish you all the best. I want you to do what makes you happy, and I'll see you later.